I was told not to be too loud. I heard people were mad that I was so loud, and it was a headphone listener thing. Guys, guys, we're chill today. Relax, everybody. Yeah. Calm down. Welcome to the everybody Wolf Den Podcast. Cool. How you everybody doing? Be cool. We're so cool. Hello, everyone. Calm. Yeah, just so cool. Calm. Collected. How you doing, guys? Welcome to the podcast. Woo! <laughs> This is not the first time uh, I've talked today. I, I my throat's clear. I'm ready to go. Good. Do it, baby. Good. Woo! Hi, guys. Uh, well, how are you doing? Not bad. Uh, this is my third shirt of the day because the previous two had a uh, child spit up all over it. So oh, same. I know. I'm exactly all right. What that's how, like. How many How many times have you had to change your shirt today? Uh, none. Actually, this is a weird, wacky thing I'm doing today. New thing I'm trying out. Uh -huh. decided you know what i'm not going anywhere sweatpants no underwear oh no oh, free ball oh, it. so if this just went from you've become one of those people who wear sweatpants yeah and then it just got real gross real uncomfortable <laughs> we're just i just i said i said f it i was like i'm not going anywhere uh rolled out of bed at like 2 30 forget it you only you, know, you only have to see the top half. You would have never even known. That's true. That's true. You know what? You live your life, man. <laughs> I'm living my life. I'm trying my best to live my yeah. life. It's been, do, you know, do, yeah. it's a lot of back-to-back -back work. Why even yeah. put in the work of making my clothes dirty when I don't have That's to? That's true. You should, you should do just enough to do your job and do it well. And if you don't need pants for this job, <laughs> you don't need pants necessarily. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we have a lot to talk about today that's not my balls. Um, <laughs> we have to talk about, uh, a lot of stuff. There's been a lot of news about this new, uh, Sony online service, the PlayStation online yeah, service. The, that the, the big rebranding, revamping of PlayStation Plus that will take, uh, Game Pass to the ring and beat it in the head with a steel chair until it is the champion of online video game services the, the game pass competitor that actually has a chance to yes. take down game pass um what else is there uh we, we also have to talk about mario strikers battle league yes. there's a lot of new information about that that i'm not too happy about um <laughs> the last of us is getting a remake okay of course uh, norman reedus uh leaks uh death stranding stuff um I fix it. it has Steam Deck stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yes. Um, but first, before we get into any of that, we have to do what we usually do. And thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Kikoba with 30 months. Do I have to have played Metroid Prime before I can succeed in life and love? No, it's actually uh, Fusion that you have to play. <laughs> well, you play Prime if you want to have a better understanding of your crippling loneliness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you play fusion if you want to succeed at a uh, relationship, uh, maintaining a good relationship, particularly with a computer who just uh, tells you what to do all the time. Is that is that just the story of Metroid Prime? <laughs> That's the story of Metroid Fusion. Ah, right, Prime right, is, right. Prime, you're alone on a planet all by yourself. Right, right, right. It's yeah. about finding yourself. It's about loving mm -hmm. yourself before you love somebody else. Finding, finding yourself in your loneliness. Mm -hmm. Gov Fat Cat. Thanks for the prime. Uh, anyway. Whip it out, Bob. Says Ox. Ox uh, not, night Night or whatever. Um, anyway. So PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus, baby. We got all this new info. They're going to take down Game Pass. Crazy. So uh, Sony put a blog post up on their official blog um, yesterday. Uh, your guide to the all new PlayStation Plus. Some of the things uh, we knew already going into this and some of it is actually new information and clarifying information. Uh, it's apparently um, the blog post starts. The all new PlayStation Plus begins its launch rollout today starting in Asia. So Japan and a lot of Asian countries are already getting this new service. We couldn't be more excited to offer this service as a way to get even more great games into the hands of players. 
It's June for us, right? Or is or is it June July? for us? Yes. Uh, uh, June, June well, came up way quicker than than I thought. Yes. Uh, where is the new PlayStation Plus rolling out, and when? The new PlayStation Plus will launch in most countries where PlayStation Network is available. And here is the schedule. Uh, oh, Asia except Japan launches today. Lame. Japan uh, is targeted to launch June second. Uh, North and South America is targeted at June 13th and Australia, New Zealand and Europe is June 23rd. Those are the targeted dates for rollout. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh so wait, what what was what was what's it? North America uh June, June 13th. 13th. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Which is like what, 2 3 weeks? That's very soon. Oh, I left notifications yeah. on. Yeah, that's very, very soon. I I'm on yeah. my other monitor right now trying to find a tweet from Xbox where they f they roasted Kotaku. I don't know where it went. Do they delete it? Oh. oh, I hope not. Or do they just that tweet, was tweet so much? Somebody uh, find that they, for me. It was, you know it was a reply. Yeah, it was a reply to, Kota to the Kotaku. Yeah, I'm looking at the replies. Yeah. I remember liking it. I just don't remember how long ago it was. Um... Well, anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, what are the key benefits for each plan? And they put up a nice little easy-to-read chart um, that shows you everything you get in all the different versions of PlayStation Plus. Uh, Sonic Team should take notes. because apparently, apparently, it was the Game Pass account. Yes, it was the Game Pass account. Okay, I found So, it. yeah. Uh, there's, four, there's four tiers. Uh, essential, Extra, Deluxe, which is only in markets that don't have access to cloud streaming, and premium, which is in markets that do have cloud streaming. So, oh, okay. So, so the deluxe is probably going to be slightly cheaper. Uh, yeah, I think it's like ten dollars cheaper, twenty dollars cheaper. Um, I hope it's twenty because ten is not a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, all tiers get the same benefits as current PlayStation Plus members. So if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus now, um, your benefits will carry over. So you get free PS4 and PS5 games monthly, online multiplayer access, discounts, cloud storage, and more. Uh, extra, deluxe, and premium get, a, get uh, free access to a big catalog of PS4 and PS5 games. Uh, and we talked about this last week. It's games like uh, God of War, uh, Spider-Man and Miles Morales, uh, Death Stranding, games like that. Uh, the Deluxe and the Premium tier get access to original PlayStation, PS2, and PSP Classic games, as well as PS3 remasters. Um, Deluxe and Premium also get timed, uh, time-limited game trials on select titles. And then the Premium service because uh, those are markets that have streaming, will get original PS3 games via cloud streaming and cloud streaming access for PS4, PS2, PS1, and PSP games. So the, you're saying a lot of information right now. Yes. <laughs> you're just reading what it's saying. Look, here's yes. the, here's the, we've said this before. Here's the big takeaways. Essential is a PlayStation Plus that you have already. Done deal. Yeah. Extra gives you a couple of PS5 and PS4 games. Done. Premium, because we're doing most of you guys here in America, premium gives you cloud shit and retro shit. And that's yes. the most expensive one. Yeah. Um, we've known about this for a while. We've uh, This is not new information. The new information here is that it's coming to North America June 13th, probably, yes. maybe. Yes. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, the North yeah. North uh, America. So most of the people who are here watching are are in North America. Um. And then and then yeah. prices. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Which well, we again, we've we've known before, but yeah. here they are. In case you need a reminder, in the U.S., it'll be sixty dollars a year for essential. It'll be a hundred dollars a year for extra, and a hundred and twenty dollars a year for premium. So there's a couple things with that. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is how apparently, where did that article go? Uh, 
Oh, okay. So apparently, yeah. Sony. You know how sometimes will we like to get PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live? We like to get it on like Black Friday when there's a discount, when there's like a deal. Oh yeah, that's the they, only way I get those. They're frequently on sale for the services, so you just stack them up. You just buy a bunch yeah. during like a Black Friday sale, and then you just stack it, and it just it just goes on for. You don't have to pay sixty dollars for your online service. You can pay like a like a discounted forty dollars over and over again. If you just keep doing it on like a Black Friday or a deal like that. Uh, Apparently, I saw this from uh, Nibble, Nibelian on uh, on Twitter. According to reports from Asia, players who have access to the new PlayStation Plus, if you get your sub at a discount, you'll be charged a higher upgrade fee to make up for the discount. Also, stack subscriptions must pay for the upgrade for the entire sub duration that part i don't understand the first part is if you get a discount on the subscription the next yeah. time you upgrade you have to pay the difference which is fucked that sucks yeah. that's stupid and dumb but yeah this other part stack subscriptions must pay for the upgrade for the entire sub duration stacked subscriptions stacked i guess like if you're trying if you get like a year of playstation plus for twenty dollars and you buy two of them and you try to stack it that way so you get two years for forty dollars you're eventually going to have to pay the rest of what you owe pay for the upgrade for the oh okay so it's just he's just reiterating the same thing basically yeah uh, okay, so here's uh, the post that he links to. It's from the PlayStation Plus subreddit. Okay, that's an interesting. <laughs> they got a subreddit for everything these days. Uh, this says the new PlayStation Plus plan. Just go online in Asia a few hours ago. I'll explain how to upgrade and get extra features. If you want to upgrade to extra slash deluxe, which is a thing that we've known about. Like, like I have PlayStation Plus for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm but I want to upgrade to the biggest plan. So I shouldn't have to pay for the whole biggest plan. Uh, If you want to upgrade to extra slash deluxe, you have to upgrade all the rest of your days left. You cannot just upgrade three months or one year. Okay. I'm struggling to understand all this. If you want to upgrade to extra or deluxe, you have to upgrade all the rest of your days left. So if you had like, I guess, a month left on your regular PlayStation Plus uh-huh. and you wanted to upgrade for a year, you have to upgrade the last month of your original PlayStation Plus as well. Okay. In addition to the year that you're going to get. Okay. Oh, so wait, but, but what? It's an upgrade. So. Right. So I'm not getting a year. I'm upgrading what I have already. Well, yes, but if you have, let's say, let's say your PlayStation Plus was originally supposed to expire in uh, July, so you want to buy, you want to buy, uh, I want to upgrade. Plus, it. Ex- you want to buy, you want to upgrade to extra. Let's say, yeah. So if it, if it, if your original PlayStation Plus was going to end in July, yeah, theoretically, extra would kick in in June. In, in August. Extra would kick in in August. Yeah. Well, according to this article, extra would kick in in, Ju- in July, and you would have to, you're basically paying for an extra month of extra rather than just waiting for your previous account to expire and then jumping into the next year. You follow? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so I have a month left. I want to upgrade. Yes. yes. I, I'm up. Yeah. I'm upgrading, so I'm paying. I'm paying a fee to to have more stuff for a month. Okay. And then after that month, I'm gonna pay for a whole year of of a premium. Right. Basically, it's gonna it's gonna start you earlier. If you have if you have a month left on your regular PlayStation Plus yeah. subscription, it's gonna start it's gonna start your extra subscription earlier, and you're gonna wind up having to pay extra for that 
earlier access to it. So instead of paying $60 for a year for PlayStation Plus, you're going to wind up paying $60 plus $5, let's say, for that extra month of PlayStation Plus Extra. Well, yeah. I mean, you're paying for the the more features. Right. But instead of... I, I, get, I guess what they're saying is instead of waiting for your current subscription to end and just uh -huh. roll it over the next month, it's going to start you early. Oh, so so when yeah. the so the the okay, okay, hold on. So the okay, so you have a month left. Your 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 PlayStation Plus ends in July. I want to yes. upgrade in June. I get the upgrade. Then next June is when it will resubscribe me to premium. Mm. Do I need to draw a, a a map? I I I thought I was the one who had to draw a map. <laughs> Basically, oh. you're getting <laughs> you pay six you pay you pay sixty dollars in June for a regular ass PlayStation Plus account. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. Let's say in May of next uh -huh. year, you want to upgrade to the premium account. When you upgrade to the premium account in May, uh -huh. you, in June you'll get the premium account, but you'll also be charged in May for basically an extra month of premium to make up the difference. Because okay. they're gonna roll you they're gonna roll you over to premium immediately. So instead of paying for a year of premium, you're basically you're gonna wind up paying a year and a month. Okay. So here's the reason why I'm so confused. Because it's if stupid. what you're saying is right, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Cause so so then that means there's no upgrade fee. Because you're just buying a whole nother service. You're just... You, it's, there... Like, I have PlayStation Plus already. Why are they charging me early for the premium? Uh... That's not an upgrade. That's a whole additional service. Uh, maybe if we read the rest of the post. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying uh, here to we take go. It. I figured, it, hey, one thing at a time would make my would make it easier to digest and understand. If you purchase one year of Plus for twenty five percent off, which is forty five dollars. Wait, where are you looking? Because I want to follow along so I can I can get the math. Right. Do you see where it says update? Yeah. Uh, one, two, three rows down. For example. Okay. For example, if you purchase one year of PlayStation Plus for 25% off, which is $45, uh -huh. to update to to the extra plan, uh -huh. you need to pay 100 minus 45, which is $55, not 100 minus 60, which is $40. A real example explained by by the one who mentioned this, um 1070 days left. $3,593 <laughs> needed to upgrade to the extra plan. Oh, this, this just is, made it worse. This, yeah, no, this isn't good. This isn't good. This isn't helpful at all. Why, wait, why would it ever be 100 minus 60? Because 60 is the PlayStation Plus base price. Yes. So why is it... Oh, I know. This is a different. This is a different problem. The 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 twenty five percent off is the discount. This is the discount oh. problem. This is not the the month problem that we were just down. Doing. Go, go down this to the second. A, the, the second the moral post. of the story is that this is fucking confusing and stupid. The the sec the second post. If you go down the one by handiness uh, seven nine one five. Yeah. It it it's a little bit more clear. Three okay. three bullet points. Okay. One. Uh huh. One. 
if you got a PlayStation Network Plus uh, with a discount before, you have to pay more to cover the past discount amount when you upgrade from Essential to Extra or Deluxe. Does that make sense? You follow? <laughs> I'm, so, <laughs> I'm having a really hard time. If you bought, <laughs> how much is PlayStation Plus? Regular $60. ass PlayStation Plus. $60. If you, bought it, if you bought it for $40, when you go to upgrade to extra or, or premium, yeah. you, you have to pay, not only do you have to pay the price of premium, but also... If you paid $45 for regular ass PlayStation Plus, you then have to pay the remainder of that PlayStation 50, Plus. Yeah, no, that, okay. I understand. That we okay. already we already came to that uh, uh, discovery. Two. That one I Point that one two. that disappointment I'm I'm clear on. I understand. I the math checks out. What, what else we got here? You cannot just upgrade to extra or deluxe for a certain period. You have to upgrade all if you want to have an active PlayStation Network account. So, I think that's what we were trying to figure out before. It's all or nothing. You can't just like wait for your subscription to end and then it'll uh, and then it'll roll over to uh, extra or premium. Like once you once you sign up for it, you sign up for it, and then you're like you will have to pay the difference when you sign up for it. What's the alternative, as opposed to what? You, so let's okay, let's go back to this. <laughs> my my PlayStation, my PS Plus ends in June. Okay, in May I sign up for uh, PlayStation Premium. One way you can do it is you keep your regular PlayStation benefits up until yeah. June, and then in June you start the premium benefits. Yeah. I'm reading this as Wait, I would just upgrade then. I would just pay for it then. That's not that's not an upgrade. That's that's in June. I will just buy premium. If, that's not an upgrade. But if I but if I get it early in May. Yeah. This is the problem. Even though I still have a, I still have a month left on my original subscription. Yeah. Rather than waiting for May to end and start it in June. Yeah. I'm going to get it in May. That's and an have upgrade. to pay an additional tax. Yes. You, you, but you already paid for May. Yeah, but you have to pay You're more already... for the benefits of premium. Right. But why not just wait for premium to start when your current subscription ends? That's just that's just a, that's just how that's just another that's another service. You're canceling one service and starting another service. That's not an upgrade. Right. We're talking about an upgrade. What's the problem with the upgrade? Because you already paid for the month of a different service. Right. So now they're giving you a service that you don't want to start until the next month. Because you already paid for a different service for the previous month. So so it's so it's saying you can't schedule it to start the next month. Yes. Okay. That who gives a fuck? What does that? A lot of cares? people. Just fucking. People. Just fucking wait till your thing ends. That people. We we talked about this literally at the start of this argument. People budget their time and money for when they're going to get their PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live subscriptions because. Sixty dollars a year is a lot of money for a lot of people. Yeah, so, so nothing changes. Accordingly. Just fucking but do yes, it again. It <laughs> Just keep keep doing that thing that we've been doing. Uh, the problem is the problem that I'm thinking about is I want to upgrade. I have until fucking November until my shit's up, or December or January. I think it's the end of the year. I want to upgrade now. What I want premium. What's gonna happen to me? I want to upgrade my PlayStation Plus to a premium account. What's gonna happen? What do I do? On June third or whatever the fuck, I I'm gonna have to upgrade. What happens? What do I do? Whatever you want, Bob. Whatever you want <laughs> to happen. 
<laughs> whatever you want to happen to your PlayStation Plus account, that's what's going to happen. Like, what am I paying? That's what I, I mean. What's going to happen is I'm just going to be like, here's my credit card. I don't know. Do whatever you need to do, PlayStation. But I, but like, I'm assuming that other people are going to also do this. What is the upgrade? What are we, what are we paying for that upgrade to make my current PlayStation Plus the premium for however many months? I'm I mean, assuming it's just the difference, but then the whole discount thing, that just shouldn't matter. It shouldn't apply. It's just whatever. I should be playing whatever the difference is, and then that's it. I'm Mac trying Minato to see. in the chat says, you will pay a premium upcharge for the premium service, which will be the difference. And then it won't fuck me later when it re-ups re the next year, I assume. And it won't re-up until January 2025, if that's when my service is up. I'm stressed. Uh, I'm trying to find an article that puts this in as plain English as there possible. There is. It doesn't exist. It's not easy. It's stupid and fucking wrong. Also, the number of, of game in the Extra Deluxe Library is not as what Sony promoted. For a game with different language versions, different platforms, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, original, remake, remaster, Sony will count it separated. Uh, that's, I'm assuming, going to be less of a problem for us uh, in English-speaking countries. <laughs> yes. I feel like we're going to get most of the games. <laughs> Sorry, says Bob, when you read this in an hour, the problem is upgrading when you have several years of PlayStation Plus. You have to pay the difference for all those years. Some are subscribed until 2031. No cap. Uh, you have to pay the difference? Yeah, so like if you have a, if you have a stack of PS Plus subscriptions I may. for like the next 10 years, I might. and you bought them all discounted, you're going to have to pay the difference of what you bought them for. Yeah, the discount. Yeah, I understand the discount part. The, the, the thing that was fucking just, just giving me a stroke was uh, upgrading the plan. Just upgrade. I want to upgrade. And I still don't know <laughs> what the upgrade <laughs> price is. <laughs> I saw some die. I'm just assuming it's the difference of of a premium account, which is we have the price of that. The premium is uh, uh, $120 a year. So I have to pay $60. Oh, oh, I, if I have a year already, here, I have to pay $60. Here, here's, here's the problem. Here's where it goes down to. All right, let's find more problems. See, say you have you have like a stack of like five years of PlayStation Plus. Yeah, you're subscribed for the next five years. Okay, but you want you want to upgrade to premium. Yeah, for a month, okay, just to try it out, and then go back to your regular ass PlayStation Plus. Okay, you can't because you're locked in. Because well, even if you just buy the one month of premium if you pay what is it fifteen dollars for a month of premium mm -hmm. it's going to convert your entire five-year subscription over to premium oh that's bad and that's what the problem is that's bad that's what that's what we were not getting because <laughs> we did not do well in math this isn't a math a stupid this subject. is only a little bit of a math problem the math is not hard. It's the fucking everything else in, involved in it is stupid. So that's, also, what, also, that's what we were not understanding. Another reason it's so confusing is that the answer doesn't make sense still. <laughs> the answer is so stupid that I can't fathom that that would be the case. I feel like this was it was made complicated on purpose to keep yeah, of us course. in line of and to not question it and just to let it happen. <sighs> so yeah, if you want to upgrade, 
if you have PlayStation Plus for like five years and you just want to try premium for one month, you pay the 18, it's $18 for a month of premium. You pay $18, you're not just getting a month, you're getting all five years of uh, your PlayStation Plus is now premium and you're going to have to pay for all of those five years. That's a class action lawsuit waiting to happen because you just paid for what you were assuming was going to be five years of PlayStation Plus, and then all of a sudden you want to try one service for eighteen dollars, and you get locked yeah. into. The, how do they? How do they then take? How do they? How do they then take your money? Like, how do they take more? You know what I mean? I mean, they they'll have your credit card. Well, so okay, just charge you right. So. Let's say I go to GameStop. I get a month. Because all the other fucking things were, uh, if you're getting the, if you're stacked for five years, we can assume that you got those on a discount somewhere. There's no, nobody's yeah. sitting there giving them their money at full rate for five years. Um, if they've never had your credit card before, what makes them think they could just charge you for the next future months? Don't you have to put in a credit card? Maybe. I thought you did. You might. You might to to yeah to to have a PlayStation like like store account. Yeah. But but I'm saying like, first of all, you don't have to put a real credit card. You could put it in one of those little Visa Vanilla cards, or you could yeah. uh, if you're just getting codes. If you're buying everything with codes, like, I mean, you know, there's kids that would come into GameStop and just buy everything with, buy all the codes with cash, you know? Yeah. So, like, uh, what's stopping you from just doing that? And then and then if they charge you, what, are they just going to cancel you if you don't pay up? They should cancel the I mean, premium and roll you back to, to the regular. I mean, if they're, if they're going to charge you for five years of premium when you only want one month, I can see them canceling your entire playstation plus account if you and that play. and that's a fucking lawsuit right there yeah <laughs> remember yeah you, you've we've both had that problem where you try to uh cancel your xbox live what a fucking nightmare yeah yeah you, it they like try everything to like put hurdles in I, front of you i tried to cancel my audible free trial last <laughs> week and it was just like it was literally 10 pages of are you sure mm-hmm so. I just did a legal Zoom mm -hmm. to 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 just start an LLC, and every there were five or six different uh, things that it tried to uh, five or six different yearly subscription services that were hundreds of dollars that I had to say no to. It's fucked up. Damn. Yeah. Because you could just send a letter to the state to file an LLC. You don't need any of that shit. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I'm starting an OnlyFans. That's why I did that. Uh, <laughs> amazing how Microsoft is the good guy here. What the fuck? Uh, I just, we just talked about how hard it was to cancel Xbox yeah. Live. That's not... <laughs> that's not I saying mean, they're good. That's also I, bad. Xbox has their own problems when it comes to like game pass and like their revenue model and things like that because they, they still don't have a yearly subscription it's but it's monthly oh. for game pass on all tiers and that's kind of sucks Sh um, shuja sauce says this is why for game pass it converted your live subs straight over to game pass ultimate they lost some money at first but it was less of a clusterfuck that's true see, see now th yeah. they well uh, they mm, they are very good at taking a loss at first, uh, and 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 you know having g good uh, relationship with their customers because of it. Um, but they were in hot water because they tried to. Uh, what did they try to do? They tried to get rid of Xbox Live or or something or yeah, raise they the tried price. to get rid of Xbox. They tried to double. They tried to double the price of Xbox Live Gold for a year. Mm -hmm. And like there was a huge backlash for it, right? Um. So yeah, like I mean, Xbox does a lot of cool things, uh, but they're not, uh, they're not, you know, uh, saints either. Like I, I, yeah. my my 
the example I was giving with uh, uh, trying to cancel your Xbox subscription is that all of these subscription services try to fuck you. They try to make it as hard as possible to cancel and and and, and stuff. Especially if, if they get your credit card, you're you're screwed. So uh, mm-hmm. unless you want them to take your money every year. Um, so that's what I'm saying about PlayStation. Like, like, uh, it sounds like if you want to try this premium, you can't, you have to delete your credit card information and don't let them renew or whatever. Mm-hmm. If, if you have a stacked subscription for, for PlayStation plus regular, and you just want to try pre- premium for a month, you have to delete all of your credit card information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um which is horrible it's a terrible way to go about things but yeah i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do i i i I still i mean i i want the premium but just like xbox live i mean xbox game pass i like uh i jump in every once in a while but it's definitely not worth it for me to have all the time yeah but i'm gonna do that with this too i mean i'm gonna jump in every once in a while just to try it on different devices and stuff yeah anyway that's not even the rest of the news about it. there's so much more about this new no. game pass service so i mean the the playstation blog is just again stuff we already know uh your your tr- progress and trials will carry over to uh the main game if you buy the main game uh you can you can play the games offline as long as it's not streaming uh Things like that. The uh, minimum PC requirements for streaming games on PS Plus. You need a, a Windows 7 minimum. If you're oh. still rocking Windows 7. Uh, yeah. I think the real news comes in later articles, such as PlayStation Classics for PS5 may not require a PlayStation Plus subscription. Players can individually purchase PS1 and PSP games when the new subscription goes live. That is awesome. Yes. Uh, with just a few days to go, some games have started to appear on the Malaysian PlayStation Store, giving players around the world a hint of what to expect when the update uh, comes to their region, especially regarding original PlayStation, and P- original PlayStation and PSP emulation. While some classic games will be included in the PlayStation Plus Premium subscription tier, players who aren't subscribed to these services will be able to purchase and play classic titles on an individual basis. These emulated titles aren't just the same old versions of the games you remember uh, now in your more expensive, hard-to-find PS5. They come with some unique emulation features that you might expect, like rewind and save states. YouTuber Mystic tested out Oddworld Dave's Odyssey, the only game out at the time of his writing, to see how it played on PS5. In Mystic's video, he showed off uh, settings for video filter presets and aspect ratios, rewind to get out of tough spots or to reverse a failed jump, Uh, and save states to rectify some early PlayStation frustrations. Most of these games are from an era where players had to find save spots in order to save their progress. Uh, There are also graphic settings which allow fans to experience the game as they remember with retro classic scan lines or more modern look with less exposure. Uh, The prices on the Malaysian store also seem to reflect a fair are seem relatively fair for older games. Abe's Odyssey, when converted from Malaysian to U.S. currency, will will run players about four dollars and fifty six cents. Worms Armageddon comes in at a bit more and will cost American audiences about eight dollars and eighty nine cents. It's likely PlayStation will round these prices up or down in their native markets. Um, players who have already purchased any of these games on PS3 or Vita won't need to buy them again. Some of these games will have tr- trophies in them, but they seemingly aren't guaranteed. We can get into that later. There's another article about it. This is what so it, people wish that Nintendo did. Yes. So in addition to getting your collection of classic games, um, when you subscribe to PS Plus uh, Premium, Sony's just going to have these games available for purchase on their store if you don't want to upgrade. You can buy them individually. And if you already bought these games on PS3 or Vita, you don't have to worry about buying them again. They'll just already be in your account. Right. Yeah. That is cool. That's, That's finally good. some That's, good news out, yes. out of this out of this yes. whole thing. Uh, yes. Because so, so, like this, uh, this, I'm sure there's plenty of people who are going to look at these and be like, I don't want to play all of these games. I don't need to pay $120 a month. I could just uh, buy Abe's Odyssey. 
I just want that. Yeah. You know? So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but then we also have. <laughs> this is not very good. Uh, looks like some classic games on no. PlayStation Plus will have crappy PAL frame rates. Nobody likes the PAL frame rates. Uh, this is this is also no, uh, what happened with the uh, PlayStation One Classic console. Yes, uh, the news first surfaced this afternoon thanks to Twitter user the Marmalade, uh, who booted up Ape Escape for some monkey napping for some monkey napping, right, so recently... like kidnapping, but with monkeys, only to find that the game ran at the lower frame rate inherent to PAL releases. Some responses pointed out this is maybe because uh, the Marmalade bought Ape Escape through the PlayStation Store in Indonesia, which is a PAL region. Oh. However, examining URL product codes on the Taiwanese PlayStation Store indicate that Taiwan, which is an NTSC region, got the exact same PAL version as Indonesia. His findings suggest that the entire world would receive PAL versions, a troubling thought for anyone who wants to play these games as intended. Uh, PlayStation did not immediately respond to comment. Without getting too technical, this is important, PAL refers to an encoding method used throughout Europe and parts of the world that ran uh, that outputs video at 25 frames per second. NTSC, which is much more prevalent in countries like the US and Japan, runs at around 30 frames per second. Both have their benefits, but when it comes to gaming, players unsurprisingly prefer the NTSC's more fluid frame rate. VGC recently confirmed that every first-party PlayStation Plus old-school lineup uh, uses the largely inferior PAL version, but third-party games are more of a toss-up. Tekken 2, for example, is NTSC, while Team 17's Worms Armageddon is PAL. Uh, and this isn't the first time Sony has done this. The old-school offering of the PlayStation Classic followed a similarly inexplicable pattern, although... Although almost half of the nostalgia-baiting novelty consoles games ran in the PAL format, there was no rhyme or reason. In fact, the PlayStation Classics versions of Wild Arms and Intelligent Cube were NTSC as opposed to the PAL releases on the PlayStation Store. Uh, so this article said that uh, PAL refers to encoding method used through Europe and other parts of the world that outputs video at 25 frames per second. Um, yes. Isn't that for broadcast? Yes, but because as for broadcast, TVs were built with that specification in mind. Right, right. So, you know, TVs in the NTSC region were built with the NTSC frame rate in mind, but TVs built for the PAL region were built with that uh, frame rate in mind. Right, and a lot of old CRTs only do, like, uh, 30 hertz, like, if, if, yeah. they're, if they're American, or, or sometimes it's 15 hertz interlaced. But yeah. we're not playing on old TVs. We're playing on modern TVs. So this right. is 50 hertz versus 60 hertz that we're talking yes. about now. Yeah. Um. So in some cases, like uh, this is an extreme example, but for Mega Man X on the Super Nintendo, the uh, PAL version, the 50 hertz version, the whole game is slower. <laughs> the whole game yeah. just, is just slowed down. They didn't ch change anything. Because because a lot of things about the animations and the way the game is played, a lot of it is tied to the frame rate. The clock speed of the game is tied to the frame rate in a lot of different games. Uh, so having the PAL versions of the games, if you're used to the NTSC version of the game, will fuck up everything. Yeah. Uh. Mr. Lalkins in the chat says, as someone who grew up with PAL, PAL fucking sucks. This was stupid. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. something that I'm curious about because like, if you grew up with PAL stuff, you're probably used to the PAL stuff and you'd probably be fine with this. Right, but now all TVs are standardized throughout the world. There is no more NTSC and PAL, really. Mm -hmm. So everybody's getting the same 60 hertz, 120 hertz televisions. Why not just upgrade to the NTSC versions, or if you have to do what Nintendo does with the N64 games on, you know, uh, switch online, 
They offer both NTSC yeah. and PAL versions. That's the best way to so, go is to offer both. The, yeah. the reason why I don't think they should just offer NTSC is because people might be used to the PAL versions of the game. Like if I grew up with Mega Man X in the PAL region, I might be weirded yeah. out at how fast it is in the NTSC. But uh, uh, yeah, the solution is to offer both. The re whole reason this is the case, I'm pretty sure, is that... Uh, it was a European developer that made the PlayStation Classic console, wasn't it? I think so. But and then they're probably um, doing this these ports just like Nintendo does. Like they, well, have, they have a house that just does the ports. And but they're in Europe, Nintendo's house, and they don't yeah. have this problem. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did it right. They did a good job. That this this yeah. these are not doing a good job. But also, like this is yeah. a kind of a weird uh, series of events to assume that it's going to be like this worldwide, because it's like this yeah. in in uh, what is it, Malaysia and Taiwan? Yeah, Asian countries. Yeah, so we we can just wait and see how it's going to roll out across. It could just be a mistake. Could be something they need to iron out because they're rolling it out in those regions seemingly maybe, as a test yeah. market. So maybe maybe it'll get fixed. But I, I have little faith because of the PlayStation yeah. Classic console. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, trophies. This is the last thing we're yes, going to talk uh, about PlayStation. PlayStation Plus Premium will have trophies added to the classic game. Sony Bend has confirmed that Siphon Filter will have trophy support when it launches on the revamped P PS Plus service next month. The iconic third-person shooter was first released way back in 1999. Uh, raise your hand in the chat if you were born before then. <laughs> Along... Alongside the announcement is a video giving us a sneak peek at some of the game's trophies, a silver level award called an explosive start and a follow-up tweet developer confirmed that there is also a platinum trophy up for grabs, which is called excellent Ooh. work agents. That's cool. In response to the post, Twitter user Christian, uh, Henares shared a patent filing by both by Sony for a system that detects and unlocks trophies in emulated games. This suggests that trophies will be added to other PS1 classics coming to PS Plus Premium, but it's not clear yet if this will be limited to certain titles only. So far, Siphon Filter is the only game with confirmed trophy support, but other titles included in PS Plus Classic include Ape Escape, Mr. Driller, and Tekken 2, um, which could also see those shiny uh, awards included. Uh, I should clear up because I don't think this article mentions it. This is optional. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that. I don't think this is going to happen to everybody. No, to every this game. is up to developers if they want to add trophy support. Um, but for people who are into trophies, the fact that you can upload trophy support to games is pretty cool. There was the talk about the demos, how PlayStation uh, games on the store that are more than $40, I think it was, or more than $30. Yeah, yeah. They're going to start requiring a demo version. Uh, so this is not like that. They're not requiring trophies. They're just allowing no. them to be there, which is awesome. I think that's good because not every studio is going to yeah. want to do it. I think it'll be good because if, if um, it'll give people an incentive to go back and play the classic games. Like if you want people to check out the original siphon filter let's say you know what better way to get people to go back and play it is to offer them you know trophy support right uh i'd like to close this out by showing us a tweet from xbox game pass mm -hmm. kotaku tweeted after years of hype the xbox game pass burnout is here and it's honestly a little true i saw people on twitter talking about how they're canceling their game pass subscriptions because there's not a lot to play yeah. or they've played everything that they could Xbox clapped back with a big fat ratio and said, tell me you limit yourself to only AAA games without telling me you limit yourself to only AAA games. <laughs> it's true. They have a lot of great indie stuff. They have a huge library and there is a lot of great indie stuff. They're both right. <laughs> That's the thing. They're both right. Uh, Xbox, first of all, good job with the clap back. They're absolutely right because there, there's more to gaming than just the big AAA games. And Game Pass is an excellent place for people to go and play games they wouldn't normally think to go out and buy and play. And 
have all these new unique experiences that you know they they wouldn't uh figure they would get anywhere else and for a great value you know fifteen dollars a month you could play a hundred you play a hundred games for the price of one um however Kotaku is not wrong in a sense that you know people will people will flock to services like game pass for the triple a titles right and then check out the indie stuff afterwards and yeah, yeah that's the biggest sell for game pass was the yeah. day one uh first party games and uh i mean microsoft bought a million studios to to yeah. have a huge library of first party games but uh yeah they take a long time so it's gonna be a while till that's like worth it to everybody and I, I mean, I mean, look, like it's not like PlayStation's crushing it with first party stuff right now either. Like there, there's yeah. more first party stuff on a PlayStation, but it's nothing. I mean, you're gonna experience the same sort of burnout on on PlayStation's new stuff too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they both they both have valid points. <laughs> um, uh, but but I I. Like, look, I like indie games, so it's not the same. I just yeah. wish there was some sort of uh, Game Pass situation on the Steam Deck. Like, you could do the streaming, but that's not enough. I want, like, like having a Tunic on my Steam Deck is awesome. And being able to play it between my computer and my Steam Deck. And also, it does work on my M1 Mac, by the way. Tunic really? does work on the uh, on through, you can download it from Steam on a Mac and the cloud save works right. and it goes to my Steam Deck so my fucking nice. MacBook can swip swap with my Steam Deck it's awesome but uh I didn't have to pay thirty dollars for it I could have just played right. it on Game Pass and so if I can get Game Pass on the Steam Deck that would be life changing maybe I can get a PlayStation Plus Premium on the Steam Deck maybe I doubt it but that would be cool. Uh, the minimum specs required uh, Windows 7, so I don't know if well, that's uh, for that'll be on Steam. Is that for streaming? That's for streaming, right? That's for streaming, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Game Pass on PC, you don't have to stream. Right. But, I mean, it's not a PC, it's Linux, so. Yeah. I don't know. The Xbox, uh, Microsoft said they're not opposed to putting Game Pass on, on the Steam Deck. We even They even no. have a whole weird uh, uh, tutorial on how to get it to work on the Steam Deck through streaming. Um, and Steam, ha and they've been releasing Windows drivers for Steam Deck. So slowly but surely, you right. know, you can turn that thing into a Windows machine. Yeah, I'm going to when they when they ha have the official Windows drivers. I will do that. Right now, the Windows yeah. just isn't in a good spot. Right. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's thank some people. Yes. Uh. I'm a little behind here. We, the last one is Nico Mosso with the nine months. Thank you. Uh, Sardi with the 100 bits said, in case you missed it, people are trying to upgrade are having to pay back discounts they got on their current plan on top of the upgrade fee. Yes, that we came to, yeah. we figured it out. It took yes. us a long time to get there. We figured it out. Thank uh, you for joining us on this weird and wacky journey. <laughs> Rock and Val gifted us up to Sardi. Thank you very much. Smart Squirrel, thank you for the Prime. Open Serious Fox, thank you for the 14 months. Bob, what if I paid for Twitch today and had to watch ads until the end of the month? If you paid for Twitch today and had to watch ads for the end of the month. Don't, don't do this to us. Do not. We you figured out Sony. Do not make us figure out Twitch too. If you had to watch ads for the end of the month, you, you, uh, we, would, we would make an extra dollar. Yeah. Um, sorry to give us another hundred dollars, uh, another hundred bits. I'm sorry, and then explained everything to us that we read before. Angry Eric, thanks for 14 months. What do you think about Forspoken? Uh, that's that weird game, uh, with the woman who has the arm that talks to her in a British accent. Oh, that game, the yes. particle effect game that we yes. thought only had women in it, but it turns out that there are men in it. Uh, the game that looks like it's going to get real annoying real fast uh, with the banter between the girl and her arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it just looks like a particle effect showcase. I honestly, I'm not, I don't have high expectations for that game. Um, 
It looks like a tech demo. I'm yeah. a little I'm a little worried about it. Um what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, uh, Thorvind Wharf, thank you for the nine months. Winter Chim, thanks for the hundred bits. Will, is it me or does this Bob guy look like the co-host for the Nintendo podcast? Hmm. Yeah, but his accent is different. I don't know. I don't know. Do, do you change it when you go on different shows? Because you don't sound Australian today. Yeah, more New. Oh. Good day, mate. <laughs> Shrimp on the Barbie. I almost opened up this show with an Australian accent <laughs> just to confuse people a little more. But I don't so feel don't like my relationship with, with Wood is on that level yet. <laughs> where I can just start making fun of where he's from. Flo, thank you for the gifted sub. Uh, the two gifted subs. And Dismantle OS, thank you for the 33 months. We play we play Valorant every once in a while, and I don't know all of the characters' names. And there's an Australian woman; I think her name's Sky. Yeah. And uh, we, you know, you have to do callouts, and I go, I, I, I go like, oh, Australian woman to the left. Like I don't know her name. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, all right. What else we got? We got to talk about Mario uh, Strikers. All this Mario Striker yes. news. Uh, Mario wears many hats. Uh, sometimes literally while his main profession is the hero of mushroom kingdom that doesn't stop this italian plumber from having plenty of hobbies such as kart racing and participating in just about every other sport under the sun it isn't uncommon to find mario teeing off with uh for a round of golf swinging his racket in tennis match or competing in the olympics uh one sport he's only dabbled in uh, despite being the most popular sport in the world not America is soccer, aka we're not, football. Again, we're not reading not the whole America. article. It's a boring okay. article. We know everything about Mario Strikers already. It's a freaking. Uh, it, it's Mario soccer, but yes. uh, this is called Battle League. Yes, and it's got uh, all this other shit going on in it. Okay, it. Okay, so scroll down. Re firm release date: June tenth, twenty twenty-two. Uh, this Pretty means soon. fans will only have to wait a few weeks at this point before they can get their hands on the title yes uh the confirmed players mario luigi bowser peach rosalina toad yoshi donkey kong wario and waluigi you might have noticed daisy's missing oh yeah that's might, interesting might be a dlc situation Hmm. Uh. Uh, DLC. The Mario sports titles have been enjoying the most DLC they've ever had uh, when making it over to the Nintendo Switch, and we expect the same to be true for Mario Strikers Battle League. To be clear, Mario, uh, Nintendo, Mario himself has made no announcements. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think a lot of the announcements we learned were in the multiplayer. Eight players can all play Mario Strikers Battle League at once on one console allowing for matches of four on four on a single Nintendo Switch console. Of course, you can also play online matches with up to two, two people teaming up on the same console, which will also have something called the Strikers Club Mode. These clubs can have a maximum of 20 people that are competing against other clubs in what looks to be a leaderboard or tournament style ranking. Clubs can be named and have uniforms and they can also have policies like playing to improve what? and having and, and just having fun. You can even customize your own club stadiums. There will also be cup battles, but we've only seen the menu option for this so far. So there will okay. be a Wolf Den Club. It will be in the supporter Discord at first because there's only 20 spots. So that's cool. So you can like categorize it by like, you know, we're just playing to have fun. We're playing it to like practice to get better at the game. And, you know, we're serious fucking Mario Strikers players. Don't play if you're not good at the game. Yeah. That's cool. No, I uh, yeah, so, so that that's yeah, it's it's like how Smash Bros has Elite and For Fun or whatever. I I wish Smash Brothers had the option to do doubles online, like 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 we can play yes. on the same console and play online, but uh, and be on the same team, but you can't uh, play with a friend, like like 
I, we can't be on two different consoles and team up to play a doubles match against somebody else online, which right. is fucking annoying. And I think you can do that here. Or no, I think it's on the same console. Uh, it says uh, eight players on the same console, or if you do online, two people can play on one console. You can also play online matches with up to two people teaming up on the same Honestly. console yeah okay yeah that's annoying that's stupid i wish nintendo would change that because i would like to play with friends because not all my friends are here you know right that's annoying well i mean like you like you and i can be in the same room we can play against like wood and whoever online yeah but i don't want that i want to not be in the room with you <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm sure I'm sure there's regular ass multiplayer where we can all be in different rooms. Yeah, but what I'm saying is we can't be where we are now and then play against AJ and Jackson, you know? Right. Well, no, that's not true. You could do that. Uh, you can't yeah. we can't be in separate rooms and play against random people. We can't be on a team and play against random people is the problem. Right. Well, yeah, that's always been the problem with the Nintendo games. Yeah, unless unless we're in a club. Maybe the club will fix that. Maybe. <sighs> uh, what else? Also, uh, there's items. Apparently, there were items in the other uh, Mario Strikers games, uh, but you could turn them off. So I'm, I'm assuming you could turn oh. off items in this also. Yeah. Um, but that's my main... I'm excited for this game, but uh, my main concern is that uh, it's going to have some weird, wacky bullshit that uh, tries to level the playing field so that if you're doing bad at the game, it just yeah. gives you a head start. Uh, I was excited for the new Mario Golf. I was excited for the new Mario Tennis, and all of them kind of fizzled mm -hmm. out on me because there was all that weird, wacky bullshit that tried to level the playing field, just like Mario Kart. Um, I'm hoping that this has a way to get rid of that weird wacky bullshit i do not want uh i don't want items get the items away from me there's also yeah. like the charge abilities which is fine and every character has a different one uh but yeah i just want to be able to i want to be able to play the game and if i'm doing good i want to be uh uh commended for it i don't want to be punished for doing good that's right a, that's, a, yeah, that's exactly. a recipe for a for a not fun time for bob yeah um Anyway, that's Strikers. It's coming out in a few weeks. Yay. Yeah, you can pre-order it now if you want. It's available on uh, the eShop or from your local Best of Buy. What's the date? Uh, June 10th. June 10th. Yeah. Very cool. Very pog. Yes. Uh, yo, original Spiff. Thanks for gifting five subs. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. All right. Hey, let's go back to PlayStation. Uh, yes the last of us remake is one of the industry's worst kept secrets and it's not uh, and it's not far off according to uh journalist jeff grubb who's reiterated rumors that have been swirling for several months now according to the scribe who was speaking on the kind of funny games cast he keeps hearing that the game's coming out this year he added, you've got to keep in mind that The Last of Us Part Two came out a while ago, and there's people at the studio who were looking around for something to do. It's pretty <laughs> efficient and well-oiled machine uh, over there at Naughty Dog, and, that, and they don't have too much to do because that's the whole point. It's a game that can be updated really quickly. Grubb reiterated that he's fairly confident the remake's coming out this holiday and that it will be one of Sony's biggest games. Uh, while the HBO TV adaptation is not due uh, until release next year, he rightly pointed out that it doesn't matter too much if it launches if the launches aren't aligned. The plan will be to have product available on shelves when the new show drops. If the game is due out later this year, then presumably it's something we'll learn about relatively soon when PlayStation decides to refresh its release schedule. There's still no word on how Naughty Dog's previously announced Last of Us Part Two multiplayer spin-off will factor into this, but hopefully we'll be treated to a bigger picture soon. So, I'm a little confused. Okay. Last of Us Remake. Mm -hmm. And then they say Last of Us Part Two was a while ago. So is this a Last of Us Remake? Oh, or a Last of Us a Part remake Two Remake? Last Last of Us One remake. 
A remake okay. of the original The Last of Us. Because we don't have enough of those lying around. Yeah. And so The Last of Us, the original Last of Us came out nine years ago mm-hmm. on the PlayStation 3. Uh, it got a it got a remaster like two years later on the PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. The game like still isn't that old and it doesn't feel old. Yeah, what do they need like, to update? I, don't I know, understand. like, not obviously, like, I can understand, like, a graphical refresh, but, like, a full on re release of the game just doesn't, it seems like a waste of time and money. Yeah. You know? Like, it's so weird to say that a development studio ha- is has people looking around for something to do that doesn't sound right that's really weird yeah <laughs> they should be busy a studio as like naughty dog all of the time they're probably already started like you know pre-production on the last of us three right or whatever their next project is i'm sure they've so, got a bunch of plates in there like what why yeah. it's really weird to say that they're they're looking around for something to do and like you can buy The Last of Us Remastered and The Last of Us Part Two on the PlayStation Five right now. Mm-hmm. They're not PS Five upgraded, but that's something you can do. That I'm sure that's not as expensive as remaking the whole fucking game from the ground up. You know, it's we're we're getting to like it's it just it doesn't make sense to me. Like I yeah. have no doubt that they are working on a Last of Us remake or whatever. But it just it doesn't make any sense to me that they would go about doing this because it just seems like a waste of everybody's time. It's a waste of Naughty Dog's time to make the stupid game. It's a waste <laughs> of reviewers' time to play the game again. And it's it'll be a waste of our time for spending, you know, another seventy dollars for the same game that we bought all those years ago. Um that the only reason we have to buy it again is because you don't have good backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 3. It would make sense for them to do a next gen upgrade for Last of Us yeah. Part 2 or and and remastered. I mean just just yeah. to have some upgraded resolutions and stuff and have it as like a patch that you don't have to make a yeah. whole ass new game. But I know they like to do that. They like to try to get as much money out of people as possible. But it's also a yeah. whole lot of fucking work to do all this. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I this is weird this is a weird thing and yeah how much upgrading could it need besides like a graphical refresh like i'm pretty sure the last of us part one plays just fine i don't i mean it's been a long time since i've touched it but yeah. i can't imagine there being game mechanics that don't hold up today yeah i mean it, it plays very similar to the last of us part two yeah so i feel like you know anything that they would add or tweak like maybe the sensitivity of the analog sticks yeah that's about it and like some playstation 5 functionality like the like the uh the the little uh hd rumble and then the gyroscope or whatever the fuck you want to do to make it work with playstation 5 better but again they don't need to completely remake the entire game to do that resident evil the resident evil 7 and like the 2 and 3 remake are getting dual sense support right and those are just getting patches. They're not getting full remakes. What's the deal with the uh, previously announced Last of Us Part Two multiplayer spinoff? Did the mul- did the Last of Us Part Two not get multiplayer? Did they cancel? It did that? not get multiplayer. Uh, I just think they they just uh, got quiet on it. <laughs> they said it was going to have multiplayer. Then they said we're going to release a single player only to ensure it lives up to the quality of an underdog game. Blah blah blah. And then they just never said anything about the multiplayer. Right, right. Okay. Uh, so that's that. I mean, that's weird. I think yeah. that's a very strange thing for Naughty Dog and PlayStation to even want to do. Yeah. Uh, but this isn't strange. I think this seems pretty obvious. Norman Reedus casually reveals the existence of Death Stranding 2. <laughs> yeah. Just go to the uh, quote. You... Just go down to the quote. Yeah. No, the, the page is not loading on my computer. I hate everything right now. Why? Uh. F- Load. Load the page. Here we go. Uh, We just started the second one. (laughs) That's what he said. That's the quote. There it is. That's the quote. Uh, 
Norman Reedus was talking uh, to Magazine Leo and just uh, casually mentions that we just started the second one. Um, he re- he notes when asked about the series accidentally breaking major gaming news before going on to reference Miss Pac-Man of all things. Reedus also revealed uh, the very charming story of how he got the gig, and then he goes into uh, how he how he got involved in the whole project because they were going to do Silent Hill. That, that's that, that's they, that's interesting. Yeah. G- Guillermo del Toro, who gave this is talking as Norman Reedus, Guillermo del yeah. Toro, who gave me my first movie, called me up and said, hey, there's a guy named Hideo Kojima who's, he's going to call you, just say yes. And I go, what do you mean, just say yes? He goes, stop being an asshole, just say yes. Then I was in San Diego and Hideo came with a big group of people. He's from Tokyo and he showed me what he was working on on a game called Silent Hill. I was blown away, that's right, he was supposed to be in Silent Hill. I was blown yeah. away by what he was showing me and I was like yes let's do this it's not ms pac-man so it's so realistic it's so futuristic it's so complicated and beautiful and i was completely blown away it took me maybe two or three years to finish all the mocap sessions and everything it takes a lot of work and then the game came out and it just won all these awards and it was a huge thing so we just started part two of of that and (laughs) that's the that's how he slipped up and revealed that there's more yes uh, I mean, it's not surprising. Death Stranding was a big hit. People seem to like it or be really confused by it. Um, but the game industry runs on secrecy. They don't like to tell anyone what they're working on until like the right time. Uh, I need to play Kojima more of, of it. All people- I, 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 I played a decent amount, but it's it is not an exciting game. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting and I love the world and everything about it, but it is not engaging. It 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 it's it, it takes a lot to 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 get into it and get, and get through it. I liked what I yeah. played of it, but uh I need to I need to I need to like set aside time to play more of it. It feels like you're like I don't know. It it's it, it should be a passive thing because you're just walking around kind of for yeah. like most of it. I feel like you have to be in a certain kind of headspace in order to enjoy that game. And yeah. I am I am nowhere near getting into that headspace. To the, play I remember the, the reasons that I liked it was because of all the weird wacky things that I got into when doing boring things in the game. Like like the game yeah. tasks you with boring shit, especially in the beginning. And then weird, wacky things just happen, and it's not, like, scripted. It's just a thing that happens. So uh, it's hard to get your brain to, like, want to do it because like, cause you're, like, because you don't know that the weird, wacky things are going to happen. It yeah. just, they, just, they just happen. It's not like... It's not like in Metal Gear where it's like go rescue the president and it's like, okay, well, that's going to be weird and wacky. This is like go deliver this package. And you're like, I don't want to fucking deliver the package. But you don't know that all this shit's going to happen on the way there. It and it's one of like it's one of those games like because it's a Shima game where like there's all this attention to detail for like the stupidest things. Yeah. And like all these things that like don't you don't think matter. But to Kojima, it does matter. Mm. Like, uh, I think in the game, like you drink water in the game, right, to stay hydrated. I don't remember that specifically. Well, because there's that, and then you have to like, you can pee in the game and make urine. Oh bomb. yes, yes, you and can definitely I think, pee in the game. I think the color of your pee <laughs> is determined by how much water you drink in the game. <laughs> that I did not know. Yeah, because just like in real life. You know, the more yellow your pee is, that's usually a sign of dehydration. Yes. Uh, I remember one of the scenarios I got into that I keep thinking about. I didn't play the game enough to get into a lot of scenarios, but I remember my I was uh, walking somewhere because that's the whole fucking game. Right. Um, and my shoes were deteriorating. And I didn't have enough time to go back where I came from or to make it to where I needed to be. So my shoes were just going to not work anymore. And I was going to uh, just have bloody feet. So the only option I had was to raid a base 
knock someone out and take their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's weird scenarios like that that you get into that that make it uh interesting. And also like you can build like bridges to make uh your trek back and forth between certain areas uh more interesting. You uh discover yeah. new areas while you're walking around. Uh you discover uh, uh weird enemies and 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 problems you need to get around and shit. Um yeah. So it's it's a fascinating world and it's a fun game but it, it's just uh it, it's it's hard to express or it's hard to get it's hard to tell myself that i should play more because there is a lot more to yeah. discover that i'm going to be interested in but it's just hard to it's hard to set aside the time yeah uh f- well like we said this is a this is an industry that is um obsessed with secrecy and no man more obsessed with secrecy than kojima so he responded to Norman's little slip up and a little tweet. Uh, he said, go to your private room, <laughs> my friend, with a thumbs up emoji and a hearts over the eyes emoji and pictures of him about to hit Norman in the head with a barbed wire bat. Is this a Walking Dead reference? Yeah, that's uh, Negan's bat. I see the I see the Walking Dead in the background. I wonder if so they go. got together just for this, just for just to he might post this. So he, had, I'm assuming he had nothing to say about there being a Death Stranding too. No, he didn't say anything. Also, according to this GameStop article, uh, I forgot this. Apparently, Kojima Productions was working on an Xbox exclusive title. So, oh yeah, from a while ago. Yeah, so we're probably not going to see Death Stranding two for a long time anyway. Um. Unless this is it, but it'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see what comes first: the Xbox exclusive or Death Stranding Two, or if Death Stranding Two is the Xbox exclusive. Oh, that would be a twist. That would be a twist. It would be twisty. Yeah. Also, Kojima Productions moved studios. I don't know uh, really uh, what that means or where they went or whatever, but uh, yeah, they moved studios. They don't have that uh, weird like entrance, the weird like white room entrance anymore. Oh, like the museum entrance. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um Okay, next we have I Fix It. They're supposed to start selling Steam Deck stuff, and apparently they already started. Uh the era of fixing your own gadgets has nearly arrived, and Valve Steam Deck handheld gaming PC may be setting the best example yet. Not only does it offer a repair friendly design, but it now looks like almost every part will be sold separately at I Fix It. This evening, the company prematurely revealed a huge collection of its promised repair parts at its website, and we were surprised to see that everything down to the motherboard with the AMD uh, Aether chip at the heart of the Steam Deck will soon be available, admittedly, for a pricey $350. In fact, iFixit will sell will even sell parts that might be considered upgrades to an existing Steam Deck. Uh, if you decide you'd rather have an anti-glare screen that only comes with the oh. 512 gig model or allegedly a quieter uh, Huying fan, uh, you'll be able to nab those for $95 and $25 respectively. Uh, you can pay $5 more for the fixed kit that comes with everything you need to do the repairs, which I'd highly recommend for the screen. If you've got a spudger and a screwdriver already, you probably don't need, you probably don't need it for the fan. So yeah, that fancy anti-glare screen that only comes on the high-end model, you can just buy it and put it to your regular-ass Steam Deck. That is uh, crazy. In fact, iFixit is willing, uh, was willing to send us the complete U.S. price listing for every part it'll sell in the first wave. 23 distinct parts in all. So I'm working on a Steam Deck video about weird, wacky things you can do with your Steam Deck. And I'm going to add this. Uh... You can fucking just upgrade everything. So Steam also released the CAD files. So you can print, you can 3D print yes. a, a, a Steam Deck. But yeah. it, it's apparently a dummy file. So like, it's not actually, like you can't print like the the housing. Like you can't print just the housing if you break the housing. So you would actually have I, to I buy that. I think it's more for like accessories. Yeah. Like if you, you want to make, make your own like, accessories. Yeah. Like your own case or your own grip or whatever for yeah. it. Uh, one thing you won't see right away is the Steam Deck's battery, however, which is obviously a critical wear part 
uh, for the battery powered console that can easily drain in two hours flat. iFixit is only only has a placeholder link for the battery and the SSD thanks to uh, a user on Reddit. Here's what iFixit CEO Kyle Waynes tells The Verge about the battery situation. We are currently building we are building a solution for repairing the Steam Deck that includes all the step-by-step -step guides and parts that you need to fix your deck. Our initial release includes the parts and tools to complete most repairs. We don't have a solution for battery repairs on day one, but we are committed to working with Valve uh, to maintain these devices to maintain these devices as they age. Battery replacements are going to be essential to making the Steam Deck stand the test of time. He couldn't say when they'll go on sale beyond soon. I can't believe you can buy the motherboard. That's insane. yeah, that's the biggest one. Like that's that would be the one thing you would think they wouldn't sell you, right? Because like this means that you could theoretically buy the mother buy all the parts for the Steam Deck and build it yourself. I'm interested in that. I mean, so the motherboard is three hundred and fifty dollars. So that's right. like almost a whole Steam Deck right there. Yeah. <laughs> So for everything, yeah, it would probably be around like 600, 700 bucks. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's if you want it sooner rather than later, that's not a big, like if you buy yeah. a Steam Deck now, you're not getting it till next year. So yeah. uh, this might not be a bad option for some people if you feel yeah. like fucking around. But also like, how do you get the OS on there? Like um, there's a yeah. lot of, lot yeah. of like weird uh things i would have to think about but i mean if you also, break your motherboard anyway you're gonna have to probably yeah. re-put on the os uh also the article notes uh there are no touch pads d pads or buttons on the list yet though i fix it will sell the rubber membranes that go underneath them also no internal metal frame em shield or flexible ribbon cables so it's not like you could just build a steam deck oh. from parts but you can't. But if you crack the plastic front panel, it might be an easy twenty-five dollar fix. And you can't set. And you can't say that about most gadgets. Okay, so it doesn't have everything. Doesn't have everything. It, it is shocking that they don't have D pads and buttons and the the, the track pads. Like Ribbon you would think it would have those. Is the most shocking. True. Because that's a very easy thing to break. But I mean, look, they have almost everything you need but like right. you know d-pads and buttons and the track pads those are like you interact with those yeah predominantly i mean like, it gives you they, with, they, they have the thumbsticks which is the most right. important button because right. those will go bad eventually and third right. parties but, are making buttons i mean i mean yes. i mean uh, uh the thumbsticks Right, but you still you interact with the buttons on the Steam Deck regardless. Right. Like those are wear points. I mean, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the membrane underneath will probably wear faster than the buttons themselves, but you right. would think that they would want to offer replacement buttons and track pads. So Having, that's weird. The case is really cool. Twenty five bucks for the for the uh uh outside, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because if you drop it, that's that's a also the fact that you can upgrade to the anti glare screen is pretty cool. I'd imagine yeah. that repair is not going to be easy though. No, no, uh, and I think I think one of the re like they probably didn't say this in the in the article because the apparently the battery on the Steam Deck is one of the hardest things to remove. Mm -hmm. So they're probably trying to still work on how to remove the battery of a Steam Deck easily and safely and then offer the parts needed to replace it it looks like it's the whole ass screen i thought it would just be the glass in front of the screen but i think it's the whole ass screen yeah all right well anyway uh yeah. that's pretty cool i'm glad that they are letting you fix stuff that 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 easily there seems to be a lot you know yeah. like we could sit here and be like oh we should have buttons but i mean this is more than any other company would ever do so yeah that's really cool. And it makes a lot more sense than what Apple is doing with their, uh, you know, repair your stuff at home service. Have you seen, like, the article? Have you seen what? Have you seen the articles about Apple's, um, you know, repair your iPhone at home program, whatever it's called? I haven't seen anything about it in practice. I saw the announcement, but I haven't seen it, you know, anybody report so, on it. Real quick, uh, 
they started rolling it out. It's only for like iPhones 12 and 13, and it's only for like battery and screen replacement. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can just buy the part, but Apple will also let you rent the same tools they use in the Apple Store. That's so they cool. will send you. Well, that means that they're sending you two Pelican cases with one with a like a heat plate with a <laughs> suction cup to like heat up the glass and remove it safely and another one with like a dock that will hold everything in place to put the battery in and then reseal the uh, the phone together. I it's mean nuts. It's it's two thousand dollars <laughs> if you buy them out, or you can buy them outright for two thousand dollars, or you can rent them for forty five dollars, and you have seven days to use them before you gotta ship them back. Otherwise, you buy them. That's cool because that's the worst part of removing a screen is is yeah. the the suctioning and the adhesive and whatever. Yeah. So if I had a professional tool to do that, sure, take my forty five bucks. Yeah. No, it's. It's just it's it's cartoonishly ridiculous and over the top, mm-hmm. and like on one level it is cool, but on another level I feel like it's like an intimidation factor. Like they don't <laughs> want you to do this. This is like high end materials. It kind and of you is. Fuck this up, you fuck up your phone. It is. They're, so. they're like, you want it so bad here, you fucking do it. Here, you do it. <laughs> Let's see if you could, if your MIT degree can work this. Oh, yeah. you don't have one, you fat bastard. Exactly. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, anyway, we have some more lighthearted news to talk about. Uh, like uh, Sonic 06 is back. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly 12, 12 years after it was taken off digital storefronts, a piece of Sonic's history is now available for purchase and download digitally again. Sonic the Hedgehog 06 off. A Sonic the Hedgehog, brackets 2006, often known as Sonic 06, is widely regarded as one of the worst games in the series, and it's now, once again, relisted and available to buy and download on Xbox 360 consoles. But only Xbox 360 consoles, unfortunately. Sonic 06 was one of several Sonic games delisted from digital stores in an attempt to increase brand value after the series was put uh, after the series had put out a fair bit of stinkers in the 2010s. Uh, also among those games was Sonic Unleashed, but in 2008, the game was made available on PS3 and 360 and even made backwards compatible on Xbox platforms. So Sonic 06 relisting is significant, even if it's largely derided, if it's a largely derided entry in the franchise. However, as of this writing, it is not backwards compatible on Xbox One or Xbox Series consoles, Ugh. so you so you can only download it and play it on your 360. I what just threw fuck? my old I just threw my old one away after the Mass Effect Legendary Edition took away my one reason to keep the old box around. So I'm shit out of luck on this, but since Unleashed was made backwards compatible, it's probably Sonic 06 will as well. I um, want to play Sonic 06. I want to. I So here's the thing, I don't think it will be made backwards compatible because Microsoft made a big deal that they were ending that program. Oh yeah. So I so was, why the fuck <laughs> would this game be back up on? Well, well, wait, hold on, Will, hold on a second. Maybe they won't make it like Series X optimized, because how would you even do that? But maybe they'll make it backwards compatible through some sort of emulation. Well, maybe, but no, because they they said we are not adding any more games to the backwards compatibility list. Because friggin' uh, Sonic Ad- Adventure 2 is clearly emulating through Xbox Arcade. Right. Like Xbox right. 360 Arcade, because my save file yeah. pulls up an Xbox 360 screen whenever I boot into it. Um, yeah. So I think that there might be an easy flick of the switch to make this thing start working on my Xbox Series X. Oh, I imagine so. I imagine, I imagine it's not going to be hard to get this game of all games running. How mm-hmm. it's running on more powerful hardware, it might actually have a stable frame rate. <laughs> and not glitch I, as much. I need to know how bad it is. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen the playthrough. I have I need it. To experience I, ha- it. I have the disc version of it. So if you I ever want to put, put it in, in though, Xbox, I, I got to put, I know, it, I'll put it in here. You got you to gotta dig out the Xbox 360. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Not worth it. No. <laughs> 
I just checked well, my I don't Steam know. library because always... I thought I had it on Steam, but I don't. No, I never came to PC. I'm looking at it really? now on the on the buy page. It's five bucks. Oh. So just buy it and see if it shows up on your Xbox One. It won't. We know it won't. <laughs> it won't. But maybe one day it will. But I'll pay the five bucks. That, well, no, I won't. I'll just take the, the disc one and try it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so right. there you go. I guess if you have a 360 laying around, you got a game to play. Yeah, still, for five bucks. Still play. <laughs> Nintendo uh, to combat online cheating. Oh, how are we gonna do this? What type of weird, wacky bullshit are we gonna do? <laughs> Nintendo is always filing patents for all sorts of ideas, and they don't always see the light of day. This one might be a bit different, though. This new one will target cheaters by attempting to identify any cheaters. software modifications. Uh, this would be achieved by implementing an. Uh, attestation program that continues to check for possible code changes to the software. The technology described implements attestation programs uh, that employ code reuse techniques. In particular, the technology relates to auto-generated attestation programs for, among other aspects, detecting whether a program has been modified. In one non-limiting example, the technology uses a tool that scans uh, that scans a software program, such as a video game, uh, for usable code sequences. The tool can automatically combine code sequences to generate a large number of, of attestation programs of different varieties, such as memory checks or hashing. The same patent uh, further notes how attestation tools are particularly handy for online multiplayer and competitive play over the internet and mentions how unfair advantages uh, result in games being much less satisfying for all users. Uh, these modifications can also come with certain security risks. I, I like uh, and then it goes out, more into. I like to point yeah. out that we have 666 subscribers. Nobody subscribe, unless we lose oh. them, and then you have to subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess this is for Splatoon three. Yeah, it sounds like this is all like in preparation for Splatoon. That's their big next online multiplayer game. Right. Uh, also, I mean, also Nintendo's been working on their new online infrastructure. Uh. So this yeah. is probably just an add-on to that. Uh, yeah. I think they just reuse the same net code for every fucking game that they have that's online. Um, yeah. I think another problem with a game like Splatoon is they they use the they use like cheating as an excuse yeah. for their not being cloud saves because they think they can like manipulate the clouds the, the same yeah. file in a way to to make it cheating online uh maybe this can help fix that so we can finally get some freaking cloud saves for uh for yeah for splatoon and maybe pokemon or whatever so yeah this 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 sounds like a an update to anti-cheating that actually makes sense <laughs> yeah so so you know, it's looking for the things people actually do to cheat in games yeah uh, uh, Silent Mongo says Splat 3 is getting cloud saves confirmed on the site. Very good. Right. Good. So they, that's that, and that's it. Then that's why. It's because they did this. Yeah. So that's, that's fantastic. I hope that they do that with Pokemon games too. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's another problem. Because like, I mean, who gives a shit if people are like manipulating their save files for Pokemon if they're not playing online? Because that people do yeah. that. Like we used to do that on our Game Boys. We type, put in a freaking yeah. Game Shark and like just do dumb shit. It, I mean, Nintendo's always been like anti that stuff. They tried to sue Galoob, the makers of Game Genie, <laughs> uh, for saying like they were it was whatever stupid reason, and the courts found out like no, they can do this. Yeah. So. Uh. Except now, I don't know. I bet you these days in Japan, they could sue Game Genie if they, if they wanted oh, to. Oh, yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, the the copyright is very strange over there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's good news. That's good news for, for the next yeah. Splatoon. Uh, we got just a few more stuff to rapid fire real quick, like E3. Yeah. Oh, EA, I'm sorry. EA. The other shit. EA, uh, EA reportedly seeking a sale or a merger. Uh, Electronic Arts is actively and persistently looking for a buyer or another company willing to merge with it, according to Puck. Um, the video game company reportedly held talks with a number of potential buyers or partners, including Disney, Apple, and Amazon. It's unclear which are 
it's unclear which are interested in fully purchasing EA and which are looking to merge. But in the case of a merger, Puck says EA is seeking a deal that would allow Andrew Wilson to remain chief executive of the combined company. EA approached Disney in March in an attempt to forge a more meaningful relationship that would go beyond licensing deals, according to a source. However, Disney decided not to push forward, perhaps because, uh, because it currently focuses on its nascent streaming service. The publication said that the idea of a merger between EA and ESPN, which Disney partially owns, uh, has been floated around the industry. Among other potential partners, however, it is perhaps Comcast. The worst company in the world oh. who got the closest to the deal. Comcast CEO Brian Roberts reportedly approached Andrew Wilson with an offer to merge NBC Universal with EA. Under the deal, Roberts would take a majority control of the merged company, but Wilson would remain chief executive. The people involved didn't agree over the price of the sale and the structure of the combined entity, uh, though, and the agreement fell through uh, within last month. That would be the worst case scenario that is literally the worst company merging with the worst company <laughs> here's what i don't understand so all like th there's been a lot of talk about mergers and acquisitions in the game industry mm -hmm. uh for a while now particularly with microsoft buying up every, every company under the sun but sony's made their fair share of purchases they bought uh bungie they bought insomniac they bought bluepoint nintendo made a couple of smaller acquisitions as well uh, and it looks like Activision, uh, not, sorry, not Activision, EA, who has always been like a Me Too company, like, oh, you like Tony Hawk? Well, we got Skate. You like Call of Duty? Well, we got Battlefield. Yeah. You know, they've always tried to like say like, oh, we have the things you like too, but the EA version of it. They want to get in on the merger game. But what they didn't realize is that all the mergers and acquisitions in the game industry are happening within the games industry <laughs> yes according to this article they're reaching out to like fucking disney and ha they're reaching out to non-game companies disney famously years ago shut down its game development studios because it was costing them too much money and they thought it was better to just license out their ips to I make mean, games on th th that would make the most sense though because it uh, would. they had the exclusive license for star wars they notoriously fucked that up but, yes. but, they, but that would have made sense for EA. And I mean, like, Apple has been, like, nothing but stop and start in getting into games. Amazon has been trying for years and, like, doesn't seem to be doing anything of note. D doesn't Apple games. have a good relationship with EA for their game, their arcade situation? Isn't there a lot of EA games on Apple Arcade? Maybe. Am I making that up? But I mean, like, I I mean, like, we're if if Apple bought EA, like, you know, Madden next year is going to be an iPhone game. It's not going to come to Xbox or PlayStation. It's that'd be, not going to be a wacky way for for Apple to join the console wars. Yeah. Buy EA and be like, if you want FIFA, you got to come. You got to come to yeah. Apple TV. <laughs> I think it would be a huge benefit to any of these companies to buy a game publisher, but uh, I don't think they will ever see the value in it. And I think that no. it would make a lot more sense for like PlayStation to eat them up. But I don't know if any, I don't know if there's any more money left <laughs> in any of these big <laughs> game companies to yeah. snatch up EA. Especially because like EA is like one of the biggest. It was like yeah. Activision and then EA. So they have to do another Activision acquisition. It would be insane. Yeah. Yeah. I just, is this, this is dumb. This is a dumb thing. <laughs> so what's, so we don't know the price, right? Yeah. We don't know a price. No, they didn't say the price. It would be, I mean, Hey, Amazon would make sense too. Cause they already have a, a, a thing that they're trying to pull off with Luna. Right. And, and I know they have a game development studio, but by the same time, they've also tried to have like, make and develop other games and and google kind of figured this out too with stadia game development and traditional technology development are two different things mm -hmm. like game development is much more like improvisational and like you gotta like figure problems out on the fly and like it takes a long time mm -hmm. whereas you know regular tech development it's like there's a structure to it you figure it out step by step by step um and like that mentality didn't work well with you know 
the gaming industry mentality. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think in regular technology, you build the minimum viable product and then you iterate off of that as much as you can until the deadline, basically. But yeah. in game development, uh, the minimum viable product will change all of the time, and and yeah. and, and it's it's an art. So like, it might not the minimum viable product might not meet the expectations that you originally had because it's 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 subjective yeah um, it's not like you're solving a need like you would in a normal tech development exactly um, yeah uh also if a company were to buy ea it might make sense to us for them to buy it but like does it make sense for the company to spend all of that money for what they want to do in the future like like how much is Amazon willing to put into Luna development? Are they willing to put $70 billion? Because yeah. then they could just buy EA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but they might not be willing to put $70 billion into the games race. Yeah. They might only be willing to put a couple billion, and they already have done that in other ways. So. Yeah. So. And then, like, I was like, what the fuck is NBC Universal going to do with EA? <laughs> what are they going to do? That just sounds awful. Yeah yeah just sounds so stupid uh all right real quick let's get to this other stuff activision blizzard subsidiary oh, uh, oh yeah raven, yeah. raven software raven software um have uh they all voted to unionize they've won their union vote the votes were tallied today and the union passed with uh 19 out of 22 votes with two challenge ballots the election uh makes the games workers a Alliance, the first union for Activision Blizzard, and only the second formal union in the U.S. video games industry. Wow. The vote is a, yeah, so it's a culmination of months of organizing and seems a concerted effort. Um, so th it's good. It's a good thing. These people uh, have been fighting for protection for months now. Uh, there was a massive walkout when they laid off a couple of their uh, QA testers. Um, and finally, they, they pushed through and they they got the vote. They have a union now, so they are they can start negotiating for better contracts, better pay, uh, protections, and whatnot. Uh, cool, <laughs> and hopefully, and maybe we'll start to see a change throughout the games industry now because of this. Yeah, this is a good thing because uh, uh, I mean, Activision has been shitty, <laughs> yeah. so the, the there needs to be some sort of uh, representation for the workers. They need to get their their voices heard. Also. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's friggin' Raven hasn't been great. Uh, the Call of Duty development stuff uh, has been a fucking nightmare. So, yeah. well, at least it seems like a nightmare from the outside. So, uh, mm -hmm. this is good. Uh, th this can yes. only lead to good things. Yes, very much so. Um. Anyway, next we have uh TikTok is making games. <laughs> Getting yeah, games. Our all right, all you Zoomers out there, TikTok, the gigantic video sharing app, is particularly popular amongst the younger demographic, has more than 1 billion active users and is forecast to turn over an $11 billion profit Ooh. this year. The app is owned by ByteDance, Chinese firm, blah, 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 blah. Now ByteDance is looking to build out what TikTok does. And one aim is a big push into gaming. As first reported by Reuters, TikTok uh, has been testing games on the app in the Vietnamese market with plans to roll out its gaming elements more widely in Southeast Asia by the end of the year. Chinese TikTokers have been able to play games on the service for a while now. What games? Uh, I don't understand. According to the article, I'm getting some Newgrounds vibes here because the nature of TikTok, <laughs> short videos, video replies, and loops, and uh, virality feels like it's a good fit for a particular style of game, but because of my age, I'm going to call them Flash Games. But you know what I mean? Those two-minute experiences you noodle away at bite-sized play sessions. I mean, you know, like, uh, uh, you, you know, you, you, have you been swiping around the friggin' uh, Instagram stories or, or, or uh, TikTok? Yeah. And you, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you get to, like, a, a, a sp uh, an ad for a game that is yeah. either impossible or not at all what the game's actually like. Um, yeah. A, a lot. The one that comes to mind is that puzzle game where it's like those like golden like 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 uh like like sticks that you pull and like lava yeah. will fall or water will fall to cool yes. the lava and yeah. it's like a little puzzle game. Uh, just let me play that. <laughs> just, yeah. let, just if I'm swiping, that comes up. Just let me play it, and then okay, I did it. Now I keep swiping. 
That'd be fucking awesome. Because uh, you know what I end up doing? I screen. Sometimes I will screenshot it and then and then look at it and be like, "How do I find out the puzzle?" And then I'll figure out the puzzle <laughs> and I'll be like, "All right, I'm done." And then I'll go to the next yeah. thing. Uh, according to this, it has a few isolated games floating around already. Zynga's Disco Loco 3D was the first HTML5 game developed for the platform and has been soft launched. Oh, there you go. That's the game I'm on there already. Disco Loco 3D. I have the trailer right now. It looks like a PS1 game. What are we doing here? I mean, have you seen the um It's the a Netflix fucking game? endless runner. <laughs> what? It's it's a, it's like Sonic Dash or whatever. Temple Run. Temple Run. Yeah, yeah it's Temple Run. Yeah. But have you seen the Netflix stuff? games that they have on on their no. system? No. So if you use Netflix on like your phone or stuff, it has the games library and they're all fucking games that were already on the iOS store. So they're just mobile games. They just moved them to a different location. Well, that's terrible. That's stupid. Yeah. It's not like new unique games. It's not like, you know, big budget games. It's just, just iPhone games again. But like, I, I think this might be a good idea for TikTok if they just put it in the feed and like, here's a thing that you could, uh, that he, yeah. if you want to play and interact with TikTok, that would keep me engaged. I'd be freaking on TikTok for yeah. longer than I normally am. So. All right. Well, anyway, uh, last thing, God of War Ragnarok, accessibility features. Uh, is it Santa as Monica good Studios as highlight- The Last of Us? Uh, I think it is. Uh, Santa Monica Studio highlights a selection of the game's 60 plus accessibility options designed Holy to suit shit. player needs. Anything notable? Uh, I don't want to go through everything here. Why are they different? High contrast background customization. Yes. Uh, new Why? captions and subtitle improvements. Uh, you can change the size and the color of the captions and subtitles. You can add the speaker names to it. Uh, I'm more. interested in this hey. contrast situation because I'm get the characters are like different colors and shit. High contrast active yeah. active activation customization. Select off on or always on for gameplay only. This will exclude cinematics. High contrast mode can be set to toggle on and off from a swipe for easy access. This mode will automatically disable when in settings menu. Okay, what does it mean though? I think it means it's a way of separating the player from the enemies Uh and the background select a color palette that fits your play style and adjust individual colors for characters enemies and items that's really cool having a if i can if i can make the the items like a bright red that's sick because you know yeah you see items laying around you want to pick them up (laughs) yeah yeah no and uh you know it's more to it than that there's uh audio cues now for certain items and things you can interact with on screen so like if if you like to have you know like a ping happen whenever you like you walk across something you pick up that's nice to have mm-hmm. uh yeah the last of us part two had like similar things to this and it was all like even if you don't need this stuff it's cool to see yeah like i don't i don't need the, the stuff but like this is interesting to me like it's a whole new way of looking at the game and a whole new way of like thinking about like how games are developed so, so so I always like to play the game the way the developer intended it to. So default everything is what I usually try to do. Right. Um, but there's people who are like, you know, mostly blind who this would be yeah. a huge help for. Or or yeah. even, even uh, I know Last of Us Part 2 has, has options for dexterity too. If, if, if yeah. maybe you can remap buttons to do certain things. Um, so like, of course, that's that's helpful. But also like, if you're playing a competitive game, having like high, high contrast mode and other shit like that would be like hugely beneficial. But this is absolutely I mean, nobody's playing this competitively. Yeah. Maybe a speed run, but I mean, at that yeah. point, you, it's going to be like muscle memory anyway. Yeah. Um. So that's great. We love accessibility options yeah. in games. That should be good. Accessibility good on options. Good on you, game. Sony. Mm-hmm. Good on you. Uh. Yeah. All right. That's the news, and now it's this. Yes. Quit of the week. Quit yes. Of the week. Quit of the week. This one, it was almost the Xbox tweet, but it's not. It's by <laughs> Weird Video Game Ads. I'm not sure if this is real, but I do believe it. Yeah. It's a Duke Nukem 3D ad, a magazine ad, and it says, if you don't play Duke Nukem 3D, you like men. And that's not the reason this is Tweet of the Week. The reason this is Tweet of the Week is the replies. 
which are all incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it's just people taking that and changing it a little bit. Um, wait, where are they? There was like a million. Where'd they all go? Uh, I think they got like they got buried. Know, replaced by all the other replies. Yeah. Oh, here it is. <laughs> one just erases everything and says, you like men. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one is just Duke Nukem copied and pasted a bunch of times and it says men <laughs> <laughs> if you play Duke Nukem 3D you like men Duke Nukem you like men <laughs> what just, this one just says Undertale <laughs> if you like Undertale play Deltarune if you like men play Duke Nukem 3D you <laughs> it's all different weird like uh, and then there was this one if you don't play Duke Nukem 3D, you like men. If you do play Duke Nukem 3D, you like men. You like men. <laughs> so is this real? Is this a real thing? I imagine it's real. Dude. I think it was video real. Game, video game ads used to be fucking nuts back in the day. Like, yeah, I, I, I 100% believe that an ad like this existed back then. Yeah. I want to play this one. I'm a little worried. I want to play this this video yeah. reply tweet. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. You're right. There are two sexes. The one I have with your dad. And the one I have with your mother. Yeah! Hell yeah, oh. dude. <laughs> We like that. Yeah. We like that one. Uh, all right. Well, anyway. Oh, uh, real quick. Unboxing time. It's been a while. Yay! It's been a while yes. since unboxing time. It's unboxing time. Let me take off my my uh, my anti-blue light glasses because that doesn't make <laughs> sense. Uh, here we are. Here's the package. Uh this is from i don't remember oh here's the thing oh uh custom game cases yes them we recently worked on the cover sets for the gba video collections and we ran into your amazing tenant video we felt that you needed these in your life so these are they're making gba video game cases which is pretty cool uh but then they decided to make cases for tenant which is fucking awesome because i don't have that i don't have any for mine and yeah. they made one for every volume which is sick yeah this it, is what's cool is if you if you open up the clamshell it's uh i think the the brackets for the game they're size for game boy advance and regular game boy games oh uh... yeah Game Boy Advance. Wow. And then That's cool. regular yeah. Game Boy. Cust uh, CustomGameCases.com is a website that sells wow. custom game cases. <laughs> That's really cool. It's, they have uh, game cases for many systems. You can get uh, N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, obviously, Genesis, NES, Game Gear, they put them in nice little clamshell cases uh, with the art in them, and you can put your game and the manual in if you want. They got a lot of cool stuff on here. I was looking at their website the other day. I'm, I'm very happy was, they did this. I, I don't yeah. have cases for Tenet, so uh, now I do. Yeah. Uh, I'll put them in there right after this. That's really and cool. They look really nice and professional. They do. They did a really good job. Yeah. I wonder if you could buy these on their website. Uh, I... I how many people have Tenant on Game Boy Advance? Anybody here have you can Tenant buy, on Game Boy Advance? <laughs> you can buy uh, blank cases on their website. Yeah, then you can just print the cover, I guess. You, you can do it yourself. Yeah, but you can get uh, Game Gear, Genesis, NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Virtual Boy, and blank cases. Very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, thanks for sending this over. Uh, all right, we're going to talk to people from last week's Wolf Den podcast real quick. Yes. Uh, people from the YouTube com. chat. Yes. If you left to comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast, uh, now we're going to answer you. Here we uh, go. 
Also, Joshua says, uh, five days ago, I wouldn't mind a Will Only podcast. He sounds like Bob, but with a New York accent. What? That's funny because we both have New York accents. Do I not have a, as much of a New York accent? I guess not. That's weird. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how many how many uh bagels and real New York pizzas have you had recently? <laughs> I don't know. It's weird around here. Like I'm in the city and I feel like yeah. uh not enough pizza and bagels, honestly. I feel like there was more on Long Island. I, I interacted yeah. with pizza and yeah. bagels more on Long Island. You know what it is? I think like I've just become such a hardcore Long Islander in my old age, like my accent is showing more. Mm-hmm. And like I yell at and I yell at my wife whenever she says something bad about Billy Joel. So. I I think it's a situation where when I'm around other Long Island people, my accent gets way worse. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's like that with you, but I think it's like that with other Long Islanders for sure. I I feel like it gets worse when I'm around people not from Long Island. Oh, that's like weird. I feel I feel like I become that clip of Schmidt from New Girl where he's like talking about how he's from Long Island. <laughs> uh, Bill Pink Nye says when it comes to Starfield, they could release it tomorrow or five years from now. It's going to be full of bugs and glitches. Let's face it. It's <laughs> Bethesda. So I, I, I see true, where you're coming from. True. But hopefully it's the label try to lessen the amount of bugs and glitches it'll have right a steamed devito says great <laughs> cast as usual love your brotherly love well thank you thank you uh we don't change we haven't had anybody on the show for a long time <laughs> yeah um chad dominique says my college can't my college's campus Activity Board stole my copy of Wii Sports. I lent it to them because they wanted it for a gaming event in the student center and then never received it back. When I raised issue with this and tried to get it back, I was given a written apology letter and a copy of Call of Duty World at War for the Xbox 360 instead. (laughs) Um, didn't think to replace it at the time because I had Wii Sports Resort, but trying to replace it now, it's a bummer that it costs what it does. How, that's, that's crazy you got a downgrade in that deal my friend <laughs> yeah i am really weird about letting people borrow games because that's yeah. for that reason uh that's it's just a weird imagine like it's like somebody being like hey give, let me borrow 50 bucks you know yeah i think i might have to buy spider-man on ps4 again because i lent it to a friend and i'm never seeing that again oh no that's a mistake yeah uh jazzy gamer says i don't quite understand the concern over nintendo and backwards compatibility specifically because gba was backwards compatible with game boy game boy color Wii was backwards compatible with gamecube ds was backwards compatible okay all right we get it yeah we get what you're saying switch's lack of backwards compatibility just seemed like a normal thing because of using cartridges instead of discs and no dual screen so I just don't see the concern with the follow up at the moment. The, the the thing was that yeah, everything was backwards compatible with everything. That's the that's the concern. The the concern is <laughs> the concern is that like backwards compatibility is becoming like increasingly a a much bigger topic than it ever had been when it comes to games. Uh the Xbox series is backwards compatible with everything on the Xbox one and even some things on the 360 and the original Xbox. The PlayStation five is backwards compatible with everything on the PlayStation four and eventually some things from the PS three and maybe even the PS two and PS one. The problem is Nintendo will see a trend and not do it. We've, we've seen this before. Like uh, when the industry was trending towards online play, the GameCube didn't really support online. When the industry was trending towards HD graphics, the Wii didn't have HD graphics. Um, they always march to the beat of their own drum, even when following the trend makes the most logical sense. The, the, the thing is, it's not necessarily about backwards compatibility anymore. It's about account systems. Having one account yeah. that follows you from device to device. 
You buy an iPad and you log in with the same account you use on your iPhone and everything carries over. You buy an Xbox Series and you log in with your same account from your Xbox 360 and everything carries over. The fear is that Nintendo is not going to follow that trend for the next system, for the Switch 2 or whatever it's called. You'll you'll have a Nintendo account, but you know, maybe it'll be different. Maybe you won't have access to all of your things. And that's what the problem is. Well, that's what the I problem think is Furukawa that, yeah. was saying that they will they're gonna try to do something with that. And that's what we right. talked about last week. Yeah. Um I think that it, the reason we're concerned even though Nintendo has had a good history with backwards compatibility in some cases, the reason we're concerned is because Switch has zero. There's nothing. There's no backwards yeah. compatibility at all. And and that's why that's the one thing a Switch 2 needs to change. Like, yeah, it uses cartridges, but so did the fucking DS. Where's my 3DS uh, uh, compatibility? The cartridges are yeah. like all, pretty much the same, like almost the same shape. Like fucking let me put a 3DS cartridge in, in the Switch. I thought that was going to yeah. happen. I back If you watch my videos from back in the day when we were talking yeah. about the lead up to the Switch. This guy predicted I the legit, Switch shots. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I got wrong was yeah. I was certain that there was going to be a 3DS slot or something or a way to put yeah. 3DS games in there. Because why not? If the screen's big enough, just do it. We do it yeah. in emulators all the time. Yeah. Um. Anyway, now we're in the chat. Very quickly, though, because I have to pee. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nintendo is good. ass. You... Just the IP they release once a gen. What? <laughs> uh... Rhombus Lab says, I think Unity and Unreal support on the Switch means the next one will be backwards compatible. Uh, Weird. No, that's not that's not necessarily what that means. Uh, it means that games can easily be ported, but not necessarily. Backwards compatible means the things you already bought will work on the new system. But Pokemon was I developed mean, P- in Unity. Yeah. It already <laughs> has PS3. Unity it's, it's just, I guess it's a development... Uh, uh, environment yeah. support or something. The, the PS3 supported Unity, but I can't play P- PS3 games on my PS4. Mm-hmm. So that's what we mean by backwards compatibility. Do you have a Steam wish list, Bob? Uh, I think the only thing on my Steam wish list is a Rainbow Six Three Raven Shield, the Gold Edition. <laughs> I think that's the only thing go. on my Steam wish list because I get a notification every once in a while that it's on sale, and I always just forget to buy yeah. it. Yeah. Should I buy, because I have gift card money on my PlayStation account, and uh, the gold edition of Watch Dogs 2 is like 17 bucks right now. It's a $100 value. Should I just buy that? Is it? Are you going to play it ever? Not anytime soon. Then no. Then no. Okay. Definitely I'll, don't. I'll wait. It's not I a deal. Wait. It's not a deal if you weren't going to buy it anyway. Right. I bought Resident Evil 3 because I was going to buy that anyway, but I don't know when I'm going to play that. Uh, the CPU in the Switch is probably not strong enough to what? Emulate a 3DS? What's it's that not Mega Man collection? emulating 3D. What's the Mega Man collection that you have that has uh, DS games on it? Zero? Yeah. So it, it can recreate like it can play 3d uh ds and 3ds games it's just you know porting it over to make sure it runs properly on the switch hardware and 3D, no, 3ds uh, games are not hard to emulate Hi- hyrule warriors hyrule warriors came out on the wii u and then the 3ds and then the switch it's the same game <laughs> so it can support uh 3ds games um the th- the, my freaking Odin is my Odin more powerful yeah. than my Switch? It's fucking emulating 3DS games. Great. I don't. I don't know. No, yeah. I don't know what you want. Yeah. It. Uh. It just Nintendo doesn't want to. The Kirby 64 bug is kind of sad. What is the bug? What's the problem with Kirby 64? There's a. I did not know there was a Kirby 64 bug. I thought everyone was happy that Kirby 64 was on the Switch. I know. Because they're also updating some of the other games to look more like they did on the N64. (laughs) Bar says, which one is really walking here? (laughs) If you get hit often underwater, 
if you get hit off in underwear, you'll be soft lock. What? Underwater, what? I guess? Underwater level glitch. Okay. What was it? Was that something that was in the original release of Kirby 64? Oh, fuck, I know. Um, uh, can we talk about Ugly Sonic? No. <laughs> no. No. It, it was... It was a weird thing in a movie that was already pretty weird to begin with. Mm -hmm. so. I have underwear glitches way too many times to be coincidence. <laughs> um, uh, if you get hit during invincibility frames in the underwater levels, you get stuck. Okay. okay. That sucks. That's that, that's, that, that sounds very bad, actually. Bob, what's your response about that Nintendo? What Nintendo said about being able to download games on your Wii? What did they say? Did they have a? Did they have an update. I mean, you haven't been able to download games on your Wii for years. What can you do it now? All of a sudden, I think they just got rid of 3ds uh, purchases, right? Yeah, they're like, slowly phasing that out. I think they yeah. just did. I think it just happened. Well, I think they got rid of uh, adding uh, money from a credit card. On yeah. your account. Yeah, so you can't purchase anything yeah. with a credit card. But you can do it but with if, like if you e shop have, money. Right. If you have, you know, points and stuff, you can buy it. They're just low key saying we're not gonna bother anymore. Stop asking. Well, oh, yeah, you haven't been able to do it for a while. So I'd imagine. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Um all right. Uh we're done. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast, so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast, your preferred podcast service of choice. No matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms baby uh so apparently uh i think the wii i think they sh quietly just stopped letting you download stuff on the wii like you haven't been able to oh, purchase even... stuff for a while but even if you purchase i think they quietly just stopped letting you download it oh uh, that's that's ass <laughs> and they just said shut the fuck up about it <laughs> that's yeah. what nintendo just said so i mean that kind of sucks um okay uh wood streaming go watch him he's the other half of the other podcast that i do uh that will be up every thursday if things go well um also hey other half of the number one podcast on on uh, uh fucking uh, uh itunes by the way yeah we're just a lowly number 19 over here yeah hey. <laughs> hey man which is still pretty damn good for, for yeah. For I was gonna us. say like we beat out a lot of like sh shockingly more popular podcasts than us. I know. So, uh, so keep it up. I'll Rate us it. on iTunes. It helps yes. out. Yes, that's why I say that shit at the end of every episode. You know. Uh, all right, go say hi to Wood. Thank you all for being here. Goodbye. Bye. but you know me today we have wood hawker on the show hello wood